electrolytes. All right, so here's my attempt at tying all of this stuff into the last section that we did, the last couple of sections. In the last couple of sections, we talked about strong electrolytes, weak electrolytes. We said if you take a substance, you put it in water, and if it dissociates, which means it breaks down into ions, right, then the more that happens, the more fully it breaks down, then the more of a strong electrolyte it is. And then when you have all of those ions in solution, the more ions in solution you have, the easier it is for electric current to actually flow through there. If you have a substance that, you know, like sugar, it dissolves in water, but it doesn't actually break down into ions very much, then what's going to happen is it's, it's going to either be a weak electrolyte or, or a non-electrolyte at all because it doesn't actually conduct any electricity. So that was sort of the general category of things you put in water. Now we're talking about these things called acids. That's a substance, when you put it in water, it has to break down. It breaks down, part of it breaks down into these hydrogen ions, that's the definition of the acid. And um, when you have a substance that breaks down and ionizes completely in water, then they conduct electricity because there's lots of ions in the solution, and so we call them strong electrolytes. So the bottom line is, strong acids are strong electrolytes. Because by definition, in order to be a strong acid, it has to break down completely or almost completely. So a good example of that, a good strong acid that you'll have a lot of discussions about in your class would be hydrochloric acid. It's a common acid, it's actually in the stomach acid also, and it's a common acid that you'll use in your chemistry labs and things like that. So the way you make it is you take this hydrogen chloride gas, HCl gas, you put it in water, and when you do this, it immediately starts to dissociate and break down. So you have HCl. The hydrogen ions are floating around in the water, the chlorine ions are floating around the water, and it breaks down completely. So since it's fully dissociated, we call it a strong acid. And because we have all these ions floating around solution, then the solution is able to conduct electricity. So hydrochloric acid solution should conduct electricity, at least some, some uh, conduction possible through the solution. right? So don't think of acids as this crazy additional category. Really, it's the same stuff that we've talked about in the last couple sections. Put something in water, dissociates, ions are there. The only difference is you have to have hydrogen ions in order to, for it to be called an acid. But everything else applies. So strong acids are also called strong electrolytes because of what we have written here. So let's take a minute to write something on the board. Right? So we've talked about this verbally. If you take HCl as a gas, so you get that in a gas canister or something like this, and you put it in water. So I'm just going to put an arrow, that means you put it inside of a bucket of water or something like that. What's going to happen is this is going to break down, it's going to dissociate. So you have the hydrogen ions here and the chlorine ions here that come together to form this hydrogen chloride gas. So what you're going to get when you put it in water is hydrogen ions, and now I'm going to put AQ to tell you that this is now an aqueous solution plus chlorine ions, that has a negative charge, and I'm going to put AQ here to tell you this is now an aqueous solution. So this is really the dissociation reaction, so to speak. It's not really a chemical reaction, it's just breaking apart. So we, we put it there. But notice that it is balanced. One uh, mole of hydrochloric acid follows this, uh, this, this equation here. We have one hydrogen here, one hydrogen here, one chlorine here, one chlorine here. So we don't have to put any numbers anywhere. That's why it's a really nice reaction to start talking about. But you can think about this thing breaking apart. So now we have these hydrogen ions floating around solution. This is what makes it an acid, right? So every acid that, that we're going to talk about, once you put it in water, you're going to see something like this. You're going to see some hydrogen ions floating around. That's going to be what makes it an acid. Right? And then as the, we talk about the chemical reactions later on, then this hydrogen, these hydrogen ions are going to be doing a lot of reacting with other things later on when we put another substance in there. Um, and, and that's sort of the, the, react, the chemical reactions that we're going to study later on that deals with acids. But for now, this is what happens when we put the raw material into water. All right? So this is balanced. Now there's one very, very, very important thing that I want to point out to you because it depends on your textbook how you're going to see this written. Um, it turns out the way I'm writing this is HCl breaking down into hydrogen ions plus chlorine ions. It's very simple and easy to understand there because you can look here and see that this has H and this has Cl so it breaks apart just like this, no problems, okay? But the, the, and that actually does happen. If I have a tube and I bubble uh, hydrogen chloride gas into water, that's what's going to happen. However, hydrogen ions, like I've written it on the board, 
they, this is so important, so listen up, they do not exist exactly like that when they're in a water solution. I mean, this is a good shorthand way of writing down what is actually happening, right? To visualize what's happening. But when you actually bubble the gas in there and it breaks down in the hydrogen ions, it doesn't actually exist in solution as these little H plus things that are flo floating around. It just doesn't. So what really happens, so I'm gonna put a note to you here because it depends on your book as, ex as to exactly how it's presented to you. So I'm gonna put a note. H plus as an ion does not, it does not exist by itself, by itself in water. Really is what we call H3O plus and that is called a hydronium ion. All right, so I'm desperately trying to present this to you so you don't get confused, and I, I think it's pretty easy to understand. Basically, this is the shorthand way of writing down what happens. The HCl breaks down into hydrogen ions and chlorine ions. However, if you stick a bunch of hydrogen ions in water solution, they don't, they don't exist by themselves. They immediately bond with water, because you're basically dumping them into a bucket full of H2O, right? But nature doesn't let hydrogen ions just float around by themselves. They immediately get sucked into a water molecule and kind of bond there with the water molecule. So instead of H2O, you have some H3O floating around. Now when you have H3O, it's, it's, it's an ion because you've sucked, a water molecule has sucked in a hydrogen ion. So this H3O has a positive charge. That's why I have a positive there. And it's called a hydronium ion. So in some books, the way you might see this is you might see HCl goes into water and produces H3O positive plus chlorine. And so it ionizes into these hydronium ions. But the short end of it is the reason some books, and though I choose to write it this way as well, some books also choose to write it this way as well because it's easier to understand. The HCl breaks down just like this. Um, and it, it gets the fundamental point across when we start doing the chemical reactions. So you can write it like this and everything is gonna come out just fine. The, the results of the reaction are gonna be fine. The chemical equations are gonna be fine. Everything's gonna be fine. But just know that behind the scenes, this is really usually tied up with these water molecules. They call them hydronium molecules. So if you, or hydronium ions. So if you see in your book hydronium, or what does that mean, how is this different, then this is all that's going on. So some books uh, refer to it that way, some books Keep it simplified like this for a while, which is what I'm going to do because I think it's a little easier to understand, um, and so on. So just keep that in mind.